The blunt reality is that there will be dwindling appetite and patience in the United States Congress and in the American body politic writ large to expend increasingly precious funds on behalf of nations that are apparently unwilling to devote the necessary resources or make the necessary changes to be serious and capable partners in their own defense. That was Defense Secretary Robert Gates defending his bloated budget and taking a parting shot at European allies for not spending enough on their own defense. His message is clear. America wants some help building its empire. Here now is Anthony Gregory of the Independent Institute, who recently authored a revealing report called What Price War? Afghanistan, Iraq, and the Cost of Conflict. Anthony, it's a pleasure. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. Oh, it's my pleasure, Judge. Thanks for having me. Has uh, the government under President Obama been spending on war at the same rate as the government did under President George W. Bush? Well, pretty much. Uh, for fiscal year 2011, we're looking at about $170 billion for Iraq and Afghanistan. This is more than most years under Bush. At the very end, we saw a slight uh, increase in Bush's war budget. But the overall defense budget is, is higher than it was under Bush. Uh, despite recent cuts. Has there been any a material or a substantial change in United States foreign policy, whether that foreign policy is executed by the Defense Department or the State Department, between the presidency of George W. Bush and the presidency of Barack Obama? And before you answer, remember all the promises that Senator Obama made and all the differences he drew between himself and John McCain and himself and George Bush during the campaign in 08? There hasn't been much difference. Obama promised to get out of Iraq now, he has been withdrawing slowly at the same schedule that Bush set as policy in 2008 under the Status of Forces Agreement. But now we learn that the Pentagon has pressured Iraq into, into asking us to stay even longer. Afghanistan, he's tripled the U.S. presence. Casualties are through the roof. The price of the Afghanistan war has, has skyrocketed. And of course, there's the Libya war. So the idea of preventive war without congressional support without going to the constitutional means of getting congressional approval. That's continued to uh, attacking a country that posed no threat to America. It's the same foreign policy, I, I, I'm reluctant to say. What, what is it about people who promise something and deliver the opposite, stated differently? A very liberal, leftward-leaning senator who says too much war and too much indifference to civil liberties becomes a president, engages in the same assaults on civil liberties, maybe even at a greater uh, extent, and actually ratchets up the war. When George W. Bush left office, as far as I know, we were in two countries. Now we're fighting wars in five. Yes, that's correct. And of course, uh, you're right about the lies. This is what politicians do. Earlier, you were talking about Hayek. I believe it was Hayek who said that in politics, the worst rise to the top. Now, in fairness, Obama did promise to expand the Afghanistan war. It's often forgotten that although he pretended to be a dove on Iraq, he always criticized Bush for being too much of a dove on Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Right. A, a recent poll, before we go, Anthony, uh, uh, shows that the American people might actually be smarter than the Congress, and they blame a substantial amount of our red ink on wars and on defense spending rather than on the Bush tax cuts. Is the Congress, is the President, are the Democrats, are many Republicans out of touch with the Americans who answered those polls? Absolutely. This was a very reassuring find for me that the American people realize that despite the Democrats' partisan attacks saying that it's all the Bush tax cuts' fault for this huge deficit problem, it's actually spending in, in particular on this empire and on these counterproductive and immoral wars abroad. Anthony Gregory, it's a pleasure as always. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Judge.